Hey guys, it's Julie with Julie's Designs. This is another thrift to treasure video where I pick four items that I either thrifted, got at garage sales, or was given to me and I flip them into something that is more my style for usually resale, sometimes I keep them. Um, so if this is something that you enjoy, make sure you subscribe. I upload one of these videos every single week with different items and different techniques that I use in the video. Um, okay, so first we got this little tin. Now painted tin and distressed is beautiful. I feel like people still like flirtily. It's not exactly my style. So my plan is just to paint it white, distress it, and see how it looks, and then decide if I want to do more to it. Because I'm thinking just on one side I can maybe attach a piece of wood and write something on it. Because like how cute are these little feet? I just like love little raised trays and I feel like this will work in so many areas of your house. You can put it like in your bathroom, over your toilet, you can put it as a centerpiece, you can just put it on a shelf. So I feel like it will work almost anywhere. So we'll see. This one is one that will kind of evolve as I go. Okay, and then I've been picking up lots of tarnished silver. But this isn't like the great, the greatest tarnished silver. So my plan is to make it into a tier tray. So you have this tier, this tier, and then this small tier at the top. I've made one of these. It's been a very long time. So I don't know. Hopefully it turns out we'll see how this one goes. And then, okay, I've been holding on to these for a while because they are coffee sacks but they're like christmas colors so this one and y'all see the texture on it and is the other one the same i don't even know it's been so long since i looked at these i just bought them i think i paid five dollars for them and i was like yeah i'll do some with that so i kind of have an idea I don't know. It might change by the time I start recording. So we'll see. I'm not going to say what it is in case it changes. But I wanted to definitely do something Christmassy with this. Originally, I was thinking like upholster something with it. But I don't think that's a good idea because like this isn't the greatest fabric. So I think I just want to do like a seasonal, you know, Christmas decor piece where you just put it out for decor and then you pick it up. Not something that you would keep out all year long because I love the graphics on this. I mean, the colors are right for Christmas. So that's the direction we're gonna go in. And then I have these pieces. I mean, you can probably guess what I'm gonna do with them. I'm gonna turn them into like candlestick risers. They're gonna look amazing. This is just somebody, something somebody gave to me. Like how awesome are these? So yeah, I need, they've been sitting in my shop forever. I'm like, I'm going to put that on a video. That way it gets done. Because if I put it on the video, then I have to finish it. So we're going to get those done today. They're going to sell so quickly. I don't know why I've been holding on to them for so long. It's just sometimes it takes me a while to get to stuff. So let's go ahead and get started. For some reason, I was very nervous about this project. So I went ahead and printed out a pattern on my computer. And all I do is use like masking tape and create double stick tape and tape the pattern down instead of pinning and all that just takes too much time. So this is how I do it. And then I'm using my fabric scissors and I'm going to cut it out. If you don't sew, no big deal. So neither do I. We're gonna use hot glue for this project. I'm using my hot glue gun and my favorite Gorilla Glue brand glue sticks. I love these long ones because you don't have to switch them out as often. And I'm just gluing the edges together. I don't like to go right against the edge because I like to leave some space for the fabric to be able to fray a little bit because I like that look. And you just need to be patient with this because it does take a minute for it to dry. And it's also burlap so it kind of comes through. So just be cautious and take your time when doing this. I'm using stuffing from Walmart. I just get a big pillow. They're like three bucks and then you get tons of stuffing out of it. And I like to stuff as I go. So I'll glue a little bit of the edges together and then I'll stuff that part. And then I'll keep going and then I'll stuff a little bit more. For me, it's much easier because, you know, as you get to the top, you have less room to stick your hand in. So I just find this easier. And then at the end, once it's stuffed, you can kind of go back and clean up your edges if you need to do that. 
It's easier to do that once the piece is all stuffed and a little stiffer. Okay, so I had a little extra fabric, so I ended up making two small pillows, which I'll see in the end. And then I went and put two fence boards together, and I'm gonna make like this little hanging flower sack thing. Um, all I'm gonna do is I'm going to put the remaining burlap over the edge, and then I'm gonna use my staple gun to staple it in place. And then I'm not gonna cut anything yet because since I have so little to work with, I'm just gonna go ahead and staple it and then cut off the excess after. So I use every single piece of this burlap sack. I ended up making two pillows, two of the large Christmas tree pillows, two small little pillows, and then this piece right here. And I still have a whole nother burlap sack to use. Let me know which one of these was your favorite that I made out of the coffee sack. I'm going to spray these little trays using my paint sprayer. I got this one from Harbor Freight. It was around 20 bucks and I love it. It makes such quick work when I want to spray stuff. I just keep white paint in it and I don't really clean it. <laughs> Next, I'm going to distress these. I'm just using a very light grit sandpaper and I'm just going to lightly sand it to uh, bring out some of the raised fleur-de-lis and the edges. And then I'm gonna go with a damp cloth and just kind of wipe it down a little bit more. I'm heavily distressing these little feet because I really like them and I want them to stand out. I'm gonna seal these trays using Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Enamel. I use this a lot to seal my pieces. It's easy to use and it works well. It does not turn your pieces yellow. To make the tiered tray, I first need to pick out a spindle. So this is a spindle I decided to use. I'm gonna find the middle, mark it, and then cut it in half. And then I'm gonna put the piece together. I like to visually see my pieces together to decide what my next step is gonna be. So I feel like this is too high for this top part. So I'm gonna figure out where I think it will look best and go ahead and cut it there. Next, I'm going to uh, glue the pieces together. I'm using Gorilla Glue Clear Grip. I love this stuff. It works so well, but you do need to let it dry overnight. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the uh, first two tiers on, and I'm just going to leave it overnight and dry. Now, this wasn't my first plan, but as I started putting this together, I realized I needed a dial rod or a dial screw, and I didn't have that. So... I'm going to just leave it and let it dry overnight and then the next day is dry. I'm coming back and I'm putting screws in. Now this is the way I'm going to do it from now on because it was much easier to deal with this once it was all glued together and stable instead of like fighting moving pieces. So to put the dial rod in, you just want to drill a hole the same size as a dial rod. I'm also adding glue to it just to make sure that this does not come out. And then you're gonna get like a, um, a wrench or whatever this thing is, and you're gonna screw it in, the first half of it. And then you're gonna come back with your second piece of the spindle, you're gonna drill a hole down the middle, and then screw it back on. Now, if I was making this for myself, I'm perfectly comfortable with the glue, 
and to skip this step but since this is something I'm going to resale I want to make sure it does not come apart so these screws will just ensure that this piece is very stable and not coming apart so once that is in oh I wanted to add a little extra to the bottom and then I screwed it all the way down extra glue I'm telling y'all this glue is amazing and the last step is just to add the top piece. I'm gonna put that on. I'm just doing it upside down because I find it's easier to find the center this way. And then I'm gonna let it dry. All right, now it's ready for some distressing. So for this, I'm not using sandpaper. I'm just using a wet towel. I like to go ahead and get the piece wet and let it sit for a minute and then come back and wipe it. I just find it kind of comes off easier once the paint is a little bit wet. And what this does, it just takes off pretty much like the raised layer of paint. So you're gonna see all those details because the paint's gonna stay in the details and then you're pulling off the top part and then it'll all come together. So you see how I left the tarnished silver at the top and then all that tarnished silver will come through on the bottom two trays and the piece will just kind of blend together and look amazing. Now we're gonna style this tier tray. First, I'm gonna start with greenery. I got this bag of greenery for $2 at a garage sale. You can find a million ideas on Pinterest on how to st style tier trays. I personally get overwhelmed. So I just decided to look around my house and see what I have. Here's a Noel sign that I make to sell at the holidays. And these are just some ornaments I had, but I like the size of them and they got that pine cone look to them. And then I used a cup to kind of lift up the second one that just did not want to stay in the cup. And then, oh, these cute reindeer that my cousin made with this ticking fabric. I'm gonna put a link to these in the description below. Then here's just like a wreath to just add a little bit more height and some burlap ornaments. Also, my cousin made these. This will, I'll put the link to her Etsy store below with all her cute little things that she makes. And instead of some um, like berries and stuff, I decided to add some strawberries for some, you know, to add a little bit of red to it. And I think this looks so adorable. I think this will look great in a kitchen or any room in your house. So don't be overwhelmed. Look around your house, see what you have. So to make this candlestick riser, I created a base that I thought would be a good size for this candlestick. And then on this one, I want to cut off the top because on the other ones, the top is rounded. So I want this one to be rounded too. So I'm just using my uh, saw to cut it off. Now the bases, I'm going to run it through my joiner. What this is, it makes everything even. So that way I know that my base is even and will lie flat. Now I want to put a bigger circle at the top. So I just looked around my shop for something that was the right size. That way, again, I could visually see how it looked. So the sanding disc was the perfect size. I'm just going to trace it out. I'm using a piece of cypress because I just have tons of this stuff laying around my shop. I'm going to use my jigsaw and cut it out. Next, I'm going to glue my new top onto the candlestick. I like to do it upside down because I find it's easier to find the center this way. I'm gonna let it dry for a few minutes and then I'm gonna turn it over and nail it in. To me, this works better because when you do it right away, the glue kind of slips around and stuff. So if you just leave it for a few minutes, then it, it won't move and then it's easier to nail it in. And I'm just gonna do the same thing for the base. Now, I kept going back and forth on whether I wanted to paint these white or keep them, um, you know, natural wood color. So I finally decided to go with natural wood. If 
it doesn't work i can always paint it but it's hard to unpaint it i'm using my mixture just using the waverly antiquing max wax and some water and i'm going along the whole piece you want to even do the older piece and the newer pieces and this will just make the whole thing look totally cohesive I hope y'all enjoyed this video and please comment below and let me know what was your favorite project that I worked on this week.